Okay. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna back out of the out of the Marshall component for a minute, and um, one of my teachers is uh, Wendy Palmer Sente, um, and she's developed a, a body of work called Leadership Embodiment, and she uh, essentially took the the under the underlying principles of Aikido and took the martial arts off of them. And um, one of the reasons she did that is that in the 70s, she was uh, doing outreach work in the women's prison in San Quentin. And she really wanted to help them, and they, she noticed that they were having a lot of physical tension, and they needed some way to work it out. And she thought, oh, I've been doing this Aikido thing, and I know how to do it, and I can show them how to do it. And, and then a couple days later, she arrives at the prison and gets escorted to the warden's office, who says, are you teaching the violent offender inmates martial arts? <laughs> and she goes, <laughs> you need to not do that. And she's like, oh crap. Because they were really responding to it in a positive way. And so she figured, well, maybe, maybe there's lessons in there that are the real important things that I want to communicate that I can do still in a physical way, but without the martial component. And <clears throat> so what arose out of that and looking at Aikido from that, from kind of the self-cultivation perspective, was that she realized that under stress, fundamentally under stress, we separate and individuate from others. And that that creates a lot of problems. And that a lot of times we're, we're experiencing stress in, and our bodies are displaying symptoms of stress, contraction, tightening, but we're not yet aware of it in our hearts or in our brains. And you could be running kind of stress hormones and your brain could be excreting stress hormones for minutes without you really realizing it. And by the time you kind of come around, you're angry or pissed or afraid or something else. And then it's difficult to come back. And one of the things that happens is that the brain excretes cortisol when you get it under stress. And cortisol is really great if there's a tiger in because you become extremely focused on what's literally in front of you, you get really amped up, you can fight, you can run, something. But it shuts down a lot of the prefrontal cortex and a lot of our, so our access to, um, to some degrees, to courage, to big picture thinking, to generosity, to inclusion, all those things kind of go dark in our brains. Like those whole areas in functional MRI stop working, essentially, when people get scared. And, um, so she realized that if there was a physical practice um, where we could use the body to stop that process and instead engage, um, so if, if you tighten muscles, your brain excretes cortisol. If you use your extensor muscles, if you reach out, your brain excretes testosterone. Testosterone re-wakes up the creative thinking, risk-taking, expansive parts of the brain and encourages us, or gives us capacity to access inclusiveness, um, risk-taking, big-picture thinking. And, and um, there have been studies done on just the physical posture. So just contracting muscles and just expanding muscles without any mental content. And in fact, it was something to distract the people that were doing it so they weren't thinking about that they were, you know, being generous or being bossy or whatever. And it changed their, their hormones. And so... Um, <clears throat> By engaging, uh, but by noticing what our stress patterns are and cultivating some tools to work with them, um, we can recover from stress faster. And essentially, that's what we're doing in Aikido: is we're learning to structure our bodies, we're learning to have good posture, right? We're we're open, we're not we're not contracted, we're expanded. And so, on some level, the founder of Aikido got that, and he realized that, like, oh. I'm actually a better martial artist if I'm open, expanded, relaxed, inclusive, than if I'm tight, separated, right? <clears throat> so, um, and so there are there are three uh, sort of qualities that that we work with in Aikido and in this work, and their inclusiveness, which is that feeling of being part of things with the other person, or, or as, as kind of a leader in the situation, which if you're doing Aikido, you're stepping into the leadership role, of including another person as really part of your process, rather than as a difficulty to be overcome. There's um, 
centered listening, where you're really taking in information from the other person. And that's the place where, it, physically in Aikido or any martial art, where when somebody touches you, you're taking in information about them. If you don't tighten up against them, right, you're taking in information. Like I can feel he's a little tight in the shoulder and his hips drop back and he's a little off, you know, so I can just kind of, I know you. And then the other one is um, advocating without aggression, which is all the throws in Aikido. So um, if you're going to strike, you know, I want to be able to move through without fighting with him. So I included his attack in my returning forward. So, um, okay, so it's a good theory. Let's test it. Everybody smooch down a little bit. And then kind of cross your arms. And now, think of something, either if you're a future person, think of something you have to do this week that's not going to be that fun. If you're a past person, think of something that happened last week that was not that fun. And just notice what happens inside you. Okay, shake that off. Wiggle a little bit. Okay, now sit up nice and straight. Extend your arms, open your hands. So we've got all these uh, extensor muscles firing, your triceps and your the thingies in here and that I don't know the name of, right? And now think of that same thing again. Is it different? Is your experience in your system different? Yes? No? No? You can't even bring it up. You can't even bring it up. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say it with you. <laughs> All right. So, um, and that's just a little, like, that's just slumpy and, hmm, right? Not all the other things that we can muster up. So there's a little thing there. So um, so all of us have a personality. Some of us are also characters. <laughs> but we all have a personality. And all personalities are, on some level, equally dysfunctional. We've all developed coping mechanisms and, and ways of working with the world that work mostly, but are kind of broken. You know, we all have mommy issues or daddy issues or control issues or manipulation issues, or whatever we have, right? Because we're humans, and we're bumping around and being complicated. <clears throat> and in addition to our personality, there's a part of us that is not kind of all about controlling the world and keeping ourselves safe and that, but is about truth and accessing wisdom and connecting. And, and there's that part of us that, that will sometimes surprise us with like, oh, I'm not going to be a jerk to that person. I'm going to be nice to them because they seem to need a little mm, or something, right? Or, or um, that part of you that, you know, you're working with somebody or you're playing sports or something, and all of a sudden things click, and you're like, whoa, and you sort of amaze yourself with the flow that happens, right? And so that, that's kind of what we call center in Aikido, the center of the state, right? That it's not attached to the horizontal world, but it's kind of self-aligned and inclusive. So... Um, what we it's, and, and we don't want to we don't want to walk around in a fake Dalai Lama haze pretending we're centered because it's not real don't pretend but what we want to do is go oh I'm in my crabby thing and I don't want to be in my crabby thing I want to have a way to come back so first we have to make friends with our crabby thing or our bitchy thing or our mean thing or our all of the above so, um, so we're going to do that little Aikido you know, thing with a two-hand grab. So I'm going to get nice, and, and he's just going to put a little pressure on me. Now, I can fake nothing happening, but like his hands are really annoying me right now because he's pushing my hands together instead of pushing into my body. So I so uh, and so if I don't <laughs> sorry, just to be honest. Um, and so if I don't, if I don't, uh, and, I, and, and in that moment, because I was talking, whatever, I wasn't opening back up to him. I was just faking it. And we can all fake it to some degree, you know, where you're like, oh, my partner, just want to look the dishes and the, mm. But, hi, I mean, how are you? <laughs> you know, like, like that. So I can fake it. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to invite whatever comes up to come up. And in particular, what I'm interested in is what happens in our body when we don't filter our reaction, right? And so there are basically three things that your body will do. Aggression, flight, or freeze. 
right? So you'll either, your hips will either lock in place, go toward the person, or go away. Your chest will either lock the person out, go toward them, or collapse. Your head will either go toward the person, kind of freeze in place, or go back. Um, I've worked on myself pretty hard for 20 years, and I've gotten to lock down in all three. <laughs> but if I, really, if I go back, if I kind of take off all of my self-work, here's what happens with me. It's all forward. Like, I, like you want to attack me? I will cream you! Which is why I had to stop doing karate. <laughs> so that's my wrench. Now, after a lot of work, my, my reaction is just, I lock in. Right. So my, my hips turn and my back leg locks, and I'm ready to bulldoze. And, and with my arms, with my heart, um, I keep him as far away as possible. I lock him out. And that's because I, don't, because I want to protect my, my fragile heart, you know? And then my head just stays in place because I want to get like, as much information as possible to figure out what's happening. And then create a nut. <laughs> Maybe, if necessary. Right? So, so that's my thing. And so um, I want to invite us to partner up and, um, and do that with each other. And just notice what happens with your hips. What happens with your chest? What happens with your head? Right? And it's just you. It's not a... We don't have to explain it. It happened... We got this way because we got this way. Some stuff happened. It happened. But how are we now? And, and, and by recognizing how I am now, I can make friends with myself. I can go, Oh, my... My boss cut me off in a conversation again, and I want a creamer. And I know, you know, because we're sensitive little creatures, I know just how to creamer. Or, you know, uh, oh, let me, let me show other patterns. I showed those two. That's lockdown and full aggression. And you may have, you may have kind of like lockdown in your hips, but you may do this. You know, or you may lock, you may run your hips forward, and everything else goes back. And I really kind of let him sort of overwhelm me, but I'm still like, no, I'm totally gonna do it. You know, it's just the pattern. Do you wanna, wanna do yours? Uh, sure. Sure, okay. So I just, I just give up for a second, and then I, <laughs> and then I uh -huh. So the initial reaction is? It's just to, to feel overwhelmed, and then, uh -huh. and then to find the To kind of go back. But we're not, we're not worried, we're not, we don't wanna know how you cover it up. Oh, we okay. wanna know what really happens. Oh, well, I just, if we can all get back to... Yeah, I just go back. Yeah, so it's, it's, yeah. it's the back. Right. And so does that, that feel familiar in your life? Like, oh, yeah. it's kind of, you're sort of, whoa, right here. Okay, great. So that's all we're doing. So um, go ahead and grab a partner, maybe a different partner. And um, just do it maybe one or two times each. And just notice, and if, you, and if you're not noticing what's happening with your body, just ask your partner, because they'll probably see it. And then don't, uh, don't lay a trip on anybody. Just go like, here, hips went back. So we're looking for what's happening in our hips, what's happening in our chest, what's happening with our head. Okay, so once you've done it a couple times, either you got it or you don't. So go ahead and um, go ahead and tell your partner about yourself. Like, oh, I noticed with my head. You don't have to go into excruciating detail. Just like, well, my head locked up, my heart 
I protected my heart, or, you know, I, I collapsed around my chest, and my hips went back, or whatever happened. And then just tell them, like, if, like reflect on your life for a minute, and think about, like, oh, is this, does this happen? So my, when I'm walking around in the world, does this happen? Maybe on the inside? So just go ahead. And then if you don't know, just ask your partner, like, I don't know what's going on with my head, what's going on with my head? Because they were looking right at it. Once you feel like you've both kind of exposed your pattern, go ahead and turn and face the show again. Just so we know who. Okay, great. So everybody has a personality? Okay, good. <laughs> and interestingly, like, you know, people that we think, oh, maybe this person is enlightened, you know, maybe the Pope is enlightened. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe you know a particularly, maybe Mother Teresa is like a holy person, and she doesn't have a, well, she reported having a lot of personality, <laughs> you know? And people ask, oh, maybe Dalai Lama. He's supposedly enlightened, right? He's the 14th incarnation of the Buddha of compassion, right? So he probably, no, he reports still having personality. Okay, well, if they've got one, we're probably not going to get rid of ours, so let's just move on. Okay, so that's what happens. That's our reaction. <coughs> then we want to respond. So in order to do that, we have to find something to, we have to have a practice to identify with the part of us that is vertical, that is our center, rather than the part of us that is our personality that's horizontal. So our personality is control, approval, and safety. Our heads want control, our hearts want approval, like we want love, right? We want to do things and have people go, hey. And then our, our core, in some way, is safety. You know, you get that gut feeling when the car goes right next to you. You're like, oh, God, right? Well, in the centered state, um, we have access to uh, perception, connection, and wisdom instead. Uh, and those are a little less sticky, you know? Like, the truth is kind of not sticky perception or truth. Like, it's just clear. All truths are compatible. Right? So if you speak the truth, it just works with the world. And the only thing it doesn't work with are things that aren't true. Right? So we need a way to come back. So, and, and, um, and what you'll notice, I think, as you practice more Aikido, is that you notice that you respond, or you start to, hmm, way before the crash. Right? I mean, there's a point where, here, I'm closing to him a little bit. Because I know, because hey, he's pointing at me, right? And so, I really have to work to... And then as he starts approaching me, right about here I typically close, and I have to reopen again as he touches me. Now, in Aikido, we're not necessarily thinking about these things, but we're doing them with our bodies. And I just want to bring our heads and our hearts along, which is why I'm interested in doing this practice. So, Okay, so I get, I get crunched, however I get crunched, and I'll do my modern reaction, right? Like, I'm not here with you anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, um, key, breath. Ah. So breath is the thing that causes the most chemical change in our body. So we'll start with breath. So I'm going to inhale up my spine. I'm going to think of my breath as vertical instead of, instead of in and out. I'm going to think of it as up and down. So I'm going to inhale and uplift. And, I, and because I'm such a hunkerer, because I tend to like, right? I'm going to come off my heels to remind myself not to dig in. And then as I exhale, I'm going to soften my front so that I'm not defending myself against him. Already, we're like 70% there, right? But I'm still a little small, right? I'm physically collapsed. And I'm still a little emotionally collapsed. So I want to extend up. So I want to look past him, not through him, but past him and literally at a point on the wall and point my fingers at it. Now, I don't want to point at my wrists, because that's my secret defense is kicking in again. I want to push him away. Instead of pushing him away, I'm just going to reach into open space. 
And then I'm going to look on the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm literally pointing at a point on the wall with my fingertips. Uh, with this, because then I'll get into my thing. Right? Okay, so I feel expanded. I feel a little uplifted. But I feel a little... Right? Can you see it? I'm a little up here. So I need to settle. And what I'm doing is I'm literally giving him the weight of my arms. And then he can keep pushing. And I can work a little bit and stay open. And he's shaking. <laughs> Whereas before, I was really crunched, and we were kind of matched. And there, he was really driving into me. And he, so much that his arms were shaking, and I was pretty okay. He's pretty strong, so that's a thing. But um, Okay, so that's the coming back. So, um, so, so let's all do it without... So just imagine that you have a partner, first of all, because other people are pretty annoying, right? Right? Yeah, <laughs> other people are pretty annoying sometimes. Sometimes they're awesome. But even awesome can be annoying, right? You know, like, you know this person that's really, mm, and you're in a little, mm, and they're like, hey, how are you today? And you're like, wanting to punch you for some reason. I don't know. Not that you, any of you would feel that way, just me. Or I want to run away from you for some reason. Ah, you're too nice, stop it. So, imagine you're all in your thing, and then, mm, do whatever your thing is, right? So then I want to inhale up my back, exhale across my front, soften. Pick one hand, literally look at a point on the wall, point with your fingers. Look at a point on the wall on the other side, point with your fingers. And you really want to open your hands. We're going to activate as many extensor muscles as possible. So we need some testosterone in here. Well, maybe we don't, but... <laughs> and then... I want to imagine that the bottoms of your arms were heavy. And you're just going to mm, settle. Now, it's not pushing, because that reactivates my contractors. But I'm just settling. Nice. All right. So try it with your partner. And as you reach out, imagine your personal space spreading out to include them as you reach out. Alright. So let's see, um, why don't we have everybody on this side be the, the, the getting grabbed people, and I'll, I'll just narrate with us. Alright, so they're pushing on us and we've done our thing. So inhale up your spine, lengthen your spine. So exhale down your front, soften your front. Alright, we're almost down. Pick one side, look at the wall, extend your fingers. Extend your arm all the way straight. Look at the other side. Extend your fingers. Extend your arm all the way straight. All right? And then imagine the bottoms of your arms had bricks attached to them. So you're just going to uh, kind of rest. And literally imagine resting on the other person. And then once you've kind of got it, invite them. So go ahead and, other, go ahead and push yours and push a little harder. And you, on this side, you may get a little reactivated. You may need to stick another breath. Keep your hold onto your extension and settle again. And just really include them. And then imagine the space around you like a shock absorber. And all the extra energy just goes into the space. So that you don't have to hold onto it. All right? So go ahead and let that go. Shake that off. All right? So we'll switch sides. So y'all on this side, make a nice offer. Oh, no, sorry. Just stay, stay where you are. I'm just going over, so we're going to get pushed on that. They're not always pushing on me. So, nice extension. And then we get pushed, and our thing happens. Yeah. All right, inhale up the spine. Exhale in the front, softening. Look to one side. Reach out with your fingers. Extend your arm all the way straight. Look to the other side. Reach out with your fingers. Extend all the way straight. Then, notice the space all around you. Imagine that it was kind of a shock absorber to absorb all the extra stuff that you didn't need to hold on to and let them hold the weight of your arms. And then pushers, extend in that push a little bit and we're going to focus on the space all around us and imagine it taking the extra energy. All right, so I can shake that off. I'm going to circle up. Um, Questions, <laughs> comments, sudden satori. You quite have to make room for that. Well, I noticed when I was pushing, when Chris expanded to settle, that so did I. Uh -huh. and so I felt the space behind me, and I felt like I was 
meeting her in the same way, not just pushing her so hard. Mm -hmm. So there's two things at work there biologically, in case you're interested in science, which I am, um, is there, there's a complex in the brain called mirror neurons. So, and so literally when we see another monkey-like creature doing something, it's as though we were doing it. Part of our brain is doing it too. And since our brain can't tell the difference between what's happening in the body and what's happening in the brain, because the brain is just the brain, it's like you're doing something. Now you're also doing something else. So there's two feedbacks, but there's something, there's a complex in your brain that's literally, so as they expand, part of you expand. As they settle, part of you settles. And then the other thing that's happening is that through the through the skin to skin contact, the electrical impulses in our bodies are influencing one another, and our parasympathetic nervous system likes to be the same as the other monkey creatures that we're touching. And so if they, if their skin galvanics go down and their respiration goes down, and our skin galvanics will tend to go down, and our respiration will tend to go down, and our heartbeat will tend to slow. If they're freaking out, we start to freak out. So there's two forces at work there in the, the, the green. What else? What did you notice? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's quite a look. <laughs> Feel good? Feel bad? Feel like you got it? Feel like you don't know what the hell's going on? It's all valid. <laughs> Feel like, what the hell am I doing here? Well, the, the settling was... <clears throat> The settling part was challenging because it, it's easy to drop if there's no pressure on it. But right. to drop while I'm still feeling the push, uh -huh. that was a little challenging to figure out how to do that. Uh -huh. And what what do you want to do instead? What's the habitual? Just to well to just go like that. Oh, you want to, you want to yeah, right. But I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't because they were still pushing on me. So right. I had to drop and still maintain the, all the other stuff you were asking to do. <laughs> <laughs> Those are just okay. So, so this is something that, that will happen a lot. Is I get crutched. I do my thing. Right. <clears throat> and then he waits up on me again. Look at my elbows. No, push, push. Mm -hmm. I collapse. And so what's happened is that I'm again, I'm starting to focus on him, and I have, a, I have a tactical advantage because of how we're physically structured, so I can maintain it, but I start to shake. Right. Because I'm activating, and I start to get active because I'm activating my contractors, because I'm activating my biceps to hold. And so, and if you, so if you notice you're doing that, if I've gotten here, you want to, you can step back and re-extend. You know, and I'll get that. That sort of sort of makes sense, sort of. And for those of you who are close to funny skirts or or screwed it up, is it, are you like, oh yeah? <clears throat> you know when you get that technique and it's like, <clears throat> and the other person was really, <clears throat> but you suddenly found the, <clears throat> right? That's it, right? That's the butter melting in the mouth. <clears throat> nice. Alrighty, so um, <clears throat> so that's. Inclusiveness and the, the, the message of inclusiveness is we're in this together. Because if we're in this together, oh well, if we're in this together, we're gonna have to fight with you. If you're looking out for me, I don't know, maybe we could. Uh, and you know, Pro Magnon didn't make it because they were very individuated, we think. They were larger and smarter and stronger, but they were much more solitary. We were smaller. A much more communal, cooperative. We had dogs, <laughs> <laughs> which we may have learned that <laughs> cooperative about thing from, right? And so there aren't any big forehead pads anymore. There's just us. That's not an accident, because <laughs> we were, you know. So cooperation is literally in our genes, in our bodies. Fighting is too, though. So then we have to make a choice: which one works better. So that's kind of what this is about. Um, so I want to do a little more of that later. I'm going to turn off the recording thing. <laughs>